if we're being told uh, to store up not just belongings but what matters to God, the question is, what, what does matter to God? What should we be storing up in our spiritual bank account? We could point out that there are three major virtues essential in the Christian life. The virtues of faith, hope, and charity. St. Paul says that faith and hope will go away at the end of this life because you have no need to have faith in what you now see fully. You have no need for hope in what you've already received in heaven. But charity remains. So if there's, some, if there's one thing we ought to be stocking up on this side of heaven, it's charity. So how do we define that? Charity very simply can be defined as friendship with God. So charity is, is a fancy word, or what we sometimes use for charity is love. But charity in the Christian sense is, is a total exchange of persons. So think about that. What, what is your gut reaction to the thought of friendship with God? Does that sound impossible? Does it sound watered down? What's your impression of friendship with God? Well, let's just, as you let that simmer in, the, in your head, consider that uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would define, St. Thomas Aquinas, this brilliant mind um, who wrote just a, a very dense introduction to theology, where he just gives very simple definitions of things. Now, most people who pick up Thomas Aquinas do not find it simple, <laughs> but um, I digress. Thomas would say that fr uh, friendship can be defined simply as the mutual benevolence that is mutually recognized. <clears throat> mutual benevolence. Think of friends that you have, that you're best of friends. You enjoy their company. The best of friends you can really think of, maybe you, maybe you don't even have this kind of friend, but a, the best of friends would be the friend that you just enjoy them as a person. It doesn't matter what you do together. You can be watching a movie together, you can be exploring nature, you could be doing whatever, but you enjoy that friendship, it's the person. Perhaps that person is your spouse. Mutual benevolence, goodwill, I want what's best for you. What, what I want is to see you happy. That Seeing you happy makes me happy. <clears throat> we have a, a new priest here at the cathedral. He was just ordained in June, so he's just getting started as a priest. He's young, he's energetic, and I've known him my whole life. Our moms went to high school together. So that's kind of a wild, unique act of providence that we're now priests together. And I feel so uh, lucky to have him because uh, he's just, I don't know, he's just, it's just great to work alongside a friend, to be serving together. But I've also noticed that it's made me really happy uh, to see him happy. I told him this the other day, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy, I'm happy for your help. I'm happy for your friendship. But I'm happy for you. It makes me happy to see you enjoying your priesthood so much. It reminds me of what it was like in those first initial months of the shock and joy of priesthood. Friendship. So what does it look like to be mutually benevolent uh, with God? God's created you out of nothing. You deserved nothing. You did not exist without His goodwill without his benevolence everything you have is a gift and what's our response or how do we see God 
Too often we, we tend to, we're, we're tempted to think of God as a, as a vending machine. I, I pay my dues and I get wealth, I get nourishment, I get help or something, you know, something I can possess. But ultimately we keep God over there, we go to Him when we need Him. I've been told that many times by people. There was one time I was having this discussion about uh, different religions with somebody who's saying, you know, all religions are the same, you know, and, and I said, well, uh, you know, I, I disagree. And uh, her, this one individual said to me, you look, I go to God when I need him. I do my thing, and then when I need things, I go to God. Hopefully most of us would never say that or believe that, but we're often behaving that way, at least in our prayer lives. God is not our mechanic. Too often we think of God as, a, as the one who fixes things. But you don't invite your mechanic over for dinner. You don't want him around your kids. <laughs> good, the good news is that God is something so much better. He said, I no longer call you slaves, he says to his disciples. Because a slave doesn't know what his master is doing. There's no, there's no closeness, there's no relationship, there's no exchange of mutual benevolence, mutually recognized. He says, I, I call you friends. I call you friends because I have told you all that I heard from my father. When you go to confession, some of you use the act of contrition that says, I'm heartily sorry for my sins because um, I deserve the loss of, because I'm afraid of the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, because I dread the, 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 the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all, because you are all good and deserving of all of my love. Those are two different kind of stages in our hearts. Sometimes we're sorry because we know it was wrong and we don't want to get punished for it. That's important because it's true. There's consequences to bad behavior, to evil actions. There's consequences even to just the dissonance with what God's will is for my life and my own self-will. And it's important that we repent. But friends, what does it look like when you actually are striving for friendship with the Lord? You're not wondering, well, like, how close can I get to pushing my friend off the edge of a cliff? Or how, how mean can I be to my friend before they leave me? <laughs> no, if you have friendship, if you're striving for friendship, you're, you're recognizing the benevolence of your friend, the goodness, what is shared, and you desire to do the same. That's the, I'm sorry because you are all good and deserving of all of my love, not just some. If we're going to spend an eternity with God, we have to start to love Him here and now. Now, with a, a complication is with friends you have common ground. Your friend might be someone that you go to school with, someone of the same age, some of you share faith, you guys work together, uh, you have a shared experience, whatever. Friends are, we have a common ground, it's necessary. Here's the thing about friendship with God. Our common ground with the almighty infinite being who created everything, the common ground with him is what he's given to us through baptism. He's given you and I a share in His divine nature. He, in the second person of the Trinity, Jesus took on human nature to help start building that bond of common ground. But the real common ground is the sharing in His divine nature. That's something He's giving to you. He wants this for you. The best of friends, the close bonds are built when two people shoulder to shoulder have a common purpose, a common mission. Like my friendship with Father Harold, we're in this mission together and that really bonds us, the priesthood. 
uh, on a superficial way, you think of like sports fans. You go to a baseball game of a team you love, and you immediately bond with strangers when you share the excitement, the common excitement. Jesus lived his entire life on earth telling us his love for the Father, showing us his love for the Father, teaching us of what it looks like to love the Father, and giving himself completely to worship the Father on our behalf. That's what he loves from all eternity. The second person of the Trinity worships the Father because he's received all goodness. All that he is, he's received from the Father. And he spends his whole existence giving everything back to the Father. In a nutshell, that is the core of what friendship is. And Jesus wants to give that to us. He loves worshiping the Father and he wants to share that with us. That's how we build bonds of friendship with God, through Jesus, and that's what the Mass is all about. All of the prayers of the Mass are directed to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, amen. Through Christ, we take confidence to have friendship with God. We become friends with Jesus, and that friendship with Jesus allows us to worship God. He helps us in that. But this isn't superficial friendship, folks. This is what shapes our whole existence. Our friendship at this deepest level is what makes us decide what we're going to do with our lives. It breaks us out of the selfishness. The essence of friendship is unselfish. That I'm not going to do what feels good. I'm going to do what's good for this friendship. And if something offends my friend, I must not do it. I must avoid it. And I must repent of it when I fall short. Friendship at the end of the day defines us. Our friendship with God is what's truly our source of identity. It's, it's what we're made for. It's who we really are at the core of our existence. So let's just ponder that as we pray and worship the Father here in this Mass.